Hello, my name is Krista Hilga, and I am going to break down my scene in Unreal Engine 4 uh, in this video and offer insight into how I approach the work and go over a few workflows and shaders used to turn this into a simple, cohesive, stylized piece. So let's get started. To begin with, the original concept art was done by Ekaterina Bogoslavskaya, um, and I, I chose this piece in all honesty because I, I was really digging the, um, the, the theme of isolation uh, as it relates to kind of what's going on in the world right now. And uh, what else I, what I really liked about it was how um, it's, uh, essentially the the colors, the colors, obviously the layout, but the the orange and the grass, the the fact that you can kind of sense that it's uh, fall or uh, some this is an island somewhere up north, perhaps in Scandinavia. Um, and I, I just kind of wanted to uh, bring that bring that to life in 3D. And like in the end, it's it's always kind of exciting with stylized pieces. Like how do you do the original concept justice while you know bringing in your own flair? So um, yeah, I just I wanted to keep it simple and just make sure that. Uh, I brought the mood and and used the unique colors that are kind of laid out here, especially in in the grass and in in the water, the darker you can see the turquoise and how the the rocks as well, how um, you can see the, the 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 painting strokes and the I guess you say splotches and then the various colors and just kind of although sub subtle. Uh, they, they they do bring a lot to this scene. So going forward, my intention is to um, break down how I did uh, the grass and the water and the rocks, as that kind of makes up about 95% uh, of the scene. So I'm just going to start with the grass now. So when it came to the grass, I had a very clear idea of the look I wanted to achieve. I wasn't necessarily 100% uh, sure how to achieve that look, but in uh, the original concept, you can definitely see there's varying colors like browns, orange, yellow in the highlights. And I wanted variation without having to blend, you know, just a bunch of mesh or, or grass mesh or materials. So one of my big recommendations, I think, when it comes to stylized pieces is always look for inspiration, see what others have written, in this case about creating stylized grass, um, and try to draw from their work. And so um, when it came to the grass, I did have kind of a vision of uh, anime movie, movie grass. Now my grass color is not very flat, as again, I wanted the variation, but uh, there was a website I came across here it is uh, by uh, Christian Sparks. And I found this very useful. Uh, he goes through his scene and provides a breakdown of, you know, the grass, the rocks, and the trees that he did. And um, what I really liked here, you can see here when the animation plays, is there's a kind of moving specular highlight that's added to indicate uh, wind. So, of course, you have the movement of the grass, the general movement of the grass, but you also have the addition of color that uh, blows through that I thought, you know, that is exactly what I was looking for and could really help bring um, my own grass to life. So, again, I recommend having a look at his work, which I find uh, really beautiful. Uh, it's if you just his website is woodbound.smallheartstudios.com and yeah so after kind of going through what he had done I gave it a go and um, here I'll just show you the grass texture that's been used I created it in Substance Designer you can see there's a gradient so it's darker brown at the bottom 
and lighter at the top of the texture. You know, nothing overly complicated. And then for the actual material, here we go. I've set the blend mode to masked. The shading model is set to two-sided foliage, and I've also clicked two-sided. For the color, I have my texture here, and that's lerped uh, along with just a uniform brown color, which helps flatten it out. Um, that is then lerped along with a, a bit of a lighter color you can see here, a lighter version of this one. And um, this essentially is what what we're seeing here is that animated sheen or that uh, specular highlight I mentioned earlier that runs through the, the, the grass to demonstrate the wind. And basically I utilize Chris Sparks workflow for achieving this effect. And in order to do so, what you need to do is you take a value, you add it to a multiply node along with the time node, which is then inputted into an add node. You then take an absolute world position, uh, and then you input it into a breakout float three components node, which breaks out the RGB channels. The, uh, the red channel is then inputted into one minus, which is input into an add node. And as you can see here, the, they are input into make float three node, which is uh, then used for the world position. And for the, the texture, the kind of texture that's running through the grass, I just created one in Substance Designer. It's just a matter of blending. Um, I think I used inverted cells and uh, perhaps a blurred cloud node. And uh, here we have just another value for the texture scale. And basically all this in essence is uh, just allowing us to pan a texture along global coordinates as opposed to just solely on one mesh so it kind of looks like it's flowing and I have here use the output the Z texture output and it's input into a power node uh, along with the wind texture power value so this defines kind of how strong the effect is and then we just mask out the R channel and that's inputted as an alpha into the lerp. And uh, you can see here even there's a slight effect running through the texture now. This is added to both the base color and subsurface color slot and I've added a zero value to the metallic spec and roughness. And I do just have a simple blue constant three vector node instead of adding, having added uh, detailed normals. Yeah. And here, the vertex animation. Now, uh, I've used a, a simple grass wind node uh, to define just intensity weight of, of the wind, uh, which is then added to a multiply node along with a vertex color node. and what I've done is I've I've gone into Maya um, and here you can see the mesh and I've I've added a green vertex color to the, the top of my mesh and in doing so I've bas I'm basically saying um, that I want uh, I want the wind to only affect the top of the mesh as you can see here and and not the bottom. So this is these vertex, uh, the color is just left black. You can see that it's not moving as as uh, nearly as much anyways as the the top of, of, of the grass. And so that's inputted into a world position, uh, into the world position offset. Um, and then last, I just have added kind of a dithering effect. So uh, I just found I needed a little bit of dithering to help blend the grass into the ground. So I've just taken a value of 10, added it to a multiply node, uh, and along with a dither, a dither temporal AA. And let's see, yeah, so this is the end result. Um, 
I was quite happy with how things turned out. I think it looks quite nice um, and it does offer variation. It's not 100% flat, but uh, yeah, I think now I will go ahead and talk about uh, the rock, the rock shader and the rock textures. When it came to the rocks in the scene, it was a bit of a uh, trial and error, I would say. I wasn't 100% sure uh, what I wanted. Now, to touch again on the original piece, uh, you can see that the rocks are quite smooth without too much detail. So I didn't, I didn't want too much normal detail or for them to look too realistic. And I was playing the game Okami and it took me uh, a little bit to realize that the boulders in the game were exactly what I wanted to achieve. Now, uh, they do not have quite a heavy, like my boulders don't have quite as heavy an outline uh, with the cell shader as in the game. But here you can see, you know, the boulders. Doo -doo -doo. These are just screenshots that I found online. But you can see there's, you know, variation in uh, the texture and there's different colors and it looks painted. Now the style really lends itself well to the overall game experience which focuses on fighting uh, by painting actions. Kind of a, a neat concept. Anyways I thought okay well let's bring that to my scene and see what happens. And so I'll just take you through the material. There we go. So for all of the rocks, I created three unique textures of which the large rock shared texture UV space, the medium rock shared a texture and the small rock shared a texture. I created uh, the textures in Substance uh, Painter. And in addition to painting the main base color, I used generators and grunge maps just to get the details. But again, didn't want too much as I felt uh, I want to avoid it looking too realistic. I did still, however, want a little bit of variation, very much like Okami. I'll just take you through this. Um, so now I created a tiling texture as well that I didn't end up using uh, much of. It's very subtle. Uh, you can see some of the outlines here and I've set up my material to at least be able to utilize some of the information from the tiling texture. So for instance here we have the normal intensity of the tiling texture uh, and I'll just show you how it's set up to scale. Apply. Let's see, all right there we go. <laughs> A lot of normal details going on right now. And the way the material is set up is that if you want to scale something, here we go. You can see here it scales, oh goodness, there we go. It scales according to the size of the actual object, which can be pretty handy, you know, when you're duplicating uh, and putting rocks around the scene. So back to the material. So back to the material, here is my uh, unique rock texture that I added to a multiply node along with a brightness strength parameter. Um, and that is then added to a lerp node. And as mentioned, that was lerped with the tiling textures. Uh, again, I just use a smidge of the tiling color and normal information. But if you want to uh, be able to set this up yourself, uh, you just take an object radius node that you connect to a multiply node. And then from here uh, below you have a texture coordinate node that you add to a multiply node. Um, and then we define a value for the object scale that is also added to the multiply node. You see here that's connected back to this multiply node. And that's then input into whatever textures uh, you intend to scale. In this scenario, I'm scaling the, the tiling uh, color and normal uh, maps. And then to define the normal strength, uh, you, you have your uh, normal texture. 
and that then you just take the red channel you input it into a multiply node along with a normal intensity parameter and then you do it again along with the green channel so multiply multiply which you then add both to an append node and then you add one more append node along with the the blue channel and that is then added uh, to the normal slot so yeah and there's no metallic specular or I've added zero to specular and roughness and I guess I'll bring it back to the scene here oh. there we go now I also I did want to also point out that um, I added you can see them here decals uh, to get the effect of the strokes and and some of the the spots on the rocks um, I guess the in all honesty if, if this were a game I may not have done it this way I may have just added it to the the texture maps but uh, for the purpose of this scene um, when I was doing you know the post processing and lighting it was just really convenient to be able to move things around see how they looked and uh, just get different effects. Now I have three I have three alphas uh, and they along with the alphas just there's just slight variation in the color that's defined in the material and yeah I just it was something that I felt the original concept kind of had and I wanted to bring those brush strokes uh, into the scene so yeah I guess uh, now we're I'll go I'll move on to water All right, I just wanted to jump right in um, and talk about the water. Now I keep going back to the original concept because there were, when I was deciding, um, when I was determining the look of the water, I took a way that I wanted to have the foam as, as seen here. In addition to the, the color of the water, I also wanted uh, just a, a, a basic mass uh, similar to this so that you don't have a, an entire ocean uh, that way it kind of resembles more of a diorama piece and here we have the water now it's incredibly easy to get lost in uh, creating water and the details and the physics and uh, Gerstner waves and so on. Now this water is not dynamic but there was uh, there was four key features that I wanted and that included again the foam the the white here so the objects in the water are creating kind of a, a foamy uh, ring around them uh, the the general visible movement you can see the water going up and down just slightly but enough that it is visible and the panning normals just to create the effect of moving waves and then the last item was the just it's very slight but it's the wind and uh, very similar to the idea of uh, creating wind on the grass I there is just a panning texture that goes along creating just uh, showing s slight gusts of wind to begin with uh, the water material I um, I just I'll start by making mention of uh, this section here that's entitled Intersecting Foam. I want to point out that there's a great tutorial, uh, here we go, uh, by, his name is Jack McKelvey, uh, and he goes over the creation of essentially this foam effect. And it's exactly what I ended up using. Uh, you basically, you bake out the ambient occlusion um, after exporting items that are contacting the the water mesh so here we have the water and these are the various um, this is the, the various mesh that are contacting the the water directly and after and in the UVs for the water you bake out the AO and then you create a normal map used as a flow map so my recommendation is if you're interested in understanding how to do 
this um, please just have a look at his work it is very clear and it was a great idea for achieving the the foam water effect so I won't go over this in detail but just to give a quick breakdown it's essentially a matter of using the normal map that was created from uh, baking out the intersecting objects on the water plane and adding that to normal panning textures which are uh, that information is then uh, lerped together um, I do use a few different normal textures as well and this information is then lerped uh, along with the fade normal strength over distance section which kind of helps at least I find give it depth and then all of this information is just added uh, to the material uh, normal channel um, and here we've taken some information from one of the the panning normals and taken the red channel and we've added that to this section here which uh, this is where the foam is added so anyways I I did also add uh, this here this panning normal information as an alpha to help define the wave color I just masked out the red channel and that way there's moving variation in the color and I'm not solely relying on normal details but just to go through the color quickly so I have a, a value of 15 that I've lerped along with a darker blue and then uh, I've added the add foam lerp information as an alpha this is then lerped into a lighter blue which again I've used the mask from uh, from the normal details here the panning normal details uh, to help uh, give it some uh, I guess some depth uh, and then this is lerped together along with the foam details and the darker uh, water details and here I then created uh, like the specular wind and I didn't use the same uh, process as with the wind from the grass I I love panning textures <laughs> in all honesty but um, so in order to do this I took a texture coordinate added it to a panner node and that's inputted just into a, a wind texture this information is then clamped um, sorry the R RGB output is then clamped uh, then added to a power a power node which is added to one minus node um, and then that is uh, lerped along with just a uniform white color and that again is lerped just with the rest of the the color detail I didn't want to overpower things with large you know white colored gusts and that is uh, I've added the output into the material the end result into the the base color of the material and yeah I do have a slight bit of metallic and specular uh, 0.01 value I've added nothing or sorry zero value to the roughness there is uh, this material is masked so I've added just uh, an opacity mask that was created in Photoshop and last I did create vertex animation that has been added to the world position offset of the material and basically this is uh, the actual movement you're seeing the the water plane make so that it looks like it's going up and down with the waves and what I did was I took an absolute world position node I masked out the red channel I added it to a divide node along with a uh, value for just general variation this information is then added to an add node 
along with a time node. Uh, and that's input into a multiply node along with another value for, that defines the speed of how quickly the waves are moving. And then that we use an MS Vertex Animation Tools Morph Targets node. Very long name. Uh, and I have created a, a texture object and this kind of uh, defines how the waves look as they they pass along the plane, the water plane. Uh, the uh, output world position offset uh, is then taken and lerped along with just a constant three vector uh, uh, uniform blue node. And then we have here just another value that defines the intensity of how much uh, you're seeing it go up and down. And again, that's added to the world position offset. And that is pretty much the water. Uh, I think it's really fun using panning textures and trying out different normal maps and seeing how the waves can be changed or adjusted. Uh, to quote, you know, the great Bob Ross, uh, it's kind of a matter of getting happy little accidents sometimes. And I used various normals until I got the effect I was looking for. And that's how I did this water. Oh, and I do want to quickly point out one more item that's available in the Epic Marketplace, and that's water materials. And it is fantastic. Uh, now, I think they do have one stylized water example, but no matter, it's super helpful. I recommend if you're looking to make your own water, even just downloading it, seeing how they set up uh, the more complicated water materials. And it's very informative as to how one would set up a more complicated uh, water shader and can still give you good some good ideas when making your own stylized water. So yeah. So I'm just going to end things by talking about lighting and a, a few of the other just key features that make up uh, the scene. Uh, the lighting is just, I just added a directional light, just intensity 2.5. Uh, the one thing I just wanted uh, was getting a shadow here underneath the, underneath the house. It's slight, but it's one thing I was going for in addition to just having uh, distinguishing shadows or variations in the in the grass. Uh, beyond that, it, I there is a skylight, just gray dark texture cube added to it, uh, intensity three, just to help uh, brighten the really dark areas. Um, yeah, and when it comes to the post processing, uh, it's. The, the, there's really nothing to it other than I did play a bit with the the contrast and the saturation of the scene there's just su some slight bloom also added ambient occlusion but I think for me what what is really important is uh, when doing stylized pieces is again and I, I know I've said this but emphasizing simple so I, I did consider adding a cell shader. I didn't end up doing that. I just felt this kind of worked best. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, the, yeah, I did end up uh, importing the animations of the boat and the boy here. Yeah, so those are just animated in Maya and it was just kind of a quick and easy way to 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 bring in the animations so you can see that actually the the rope itself as well is moving slightly along with the boat um, so that was just kind of rigged up quickly and uh, again just a very simple animation now you could do that or you could animate the those objects in sequencer or another way would be just to uh, take your time and add buoyancy to to these objects so that uh, the the I guess the height details of the um, the water would affect and, and move the actual objects 
Um, I've never done that, but it would probably be the most, uh, I guess, efficient way of getting movement to these objects. But for what I was going for, uh, I just imported those animations. And I guess that's, that's it. I hope this has been helpful or, or informative. Um, if you have any, have any questions, you're welcome to connect with me. This is my art station. If you want to reach out, this is probably the best way to do so. Thank you for this opportunity, Stylized Station. I love um, the Stylized Community spirit and knowing there's great sites that bring ideas and knowledge together on uh, stylized work. So